Hard Rock Allergy Show. Chris and Matt back in from the album Immortal Waltz by the Edge of Paradise. That's Rise for the Fallen. And joining us from that band, vocalist Margarita Monet. Margarita, welcome to the Hard Rock Allergy Show. Thank you for having me. Margarita, I just want to say congratulations. I know this album's been a while in, in, in getting it released. So what does it feel like now to finally get this album released? Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a, a long while, so we're super excited to get it finally out there. You know, we're trying to put all the pieces together, and now everything is kind of rolling, so we're just really excited. Now, one of the questions I wanted to ask, I know you've had the opportunity to work with Michael Wagner. He's uh, mixing, producing the album. But uh, prior to Immortal Waltz, you had The Perfect Shade of Black, which was released in 2013, which, for all intents and purposes, is no longer available. Now, with the new album, Immortal Waltz, are you blending these two albums together so those people that didn't have a chance to hear that uh, Perfect Shade of Black are now going to get all those tracks and then more on Immortal Waltz? Yeah, well, Perfect Shade of Black, it was actually an um, EP, and uh, it featured four songs that are actually on Immortal Waltz. So it was just something that we released to our close fans. So they, you know, got a taste of what the full album is going to sound like. And we just made, you know, limited edition uh, CDs available for a limited time. And, uh, um, yeah, we worked, you know, some of the songs, um, like the first few songs on this album that we recorded we actually worked with Bob Kulik on it and by Chase and as well we have a studio out here and we recorded with them here and if you guys know Bob Kulik he uh, worked with Kiss and a bunch of other people so it was a really cool experience to work with him and he had some awesome stories as well so yeah but you know Perfect Shit of Black was just a little taste of what Immortal Wallace was going to sound like now, with Michael Wagner coming in, did he actually work on The Perfect Shade of, Shade of Black as well, or did he just come back in and rework some of those songs on the Immortal Waltz? Yeah, Michael Wagner, he mixed all the songs on the CD. So, um, yeah, he basically all the songs are mixed by him, but um, some of the songs that came after Perfect Shade of Black we went to Michael's studio and he produced it and he was more involved, involved and we recorded all the songs over there, you know, at his studio in Nashville, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> he has a killer studio. So how did you come in contact with Michael? I mean, he's been, he worked with some big bands back in the day, like Dokken and obviously Skid Row. So how did you guys hook up with him to produce this new album? Well, I mean, we're always fans of Michael because one of our favorite records is Master of Puppets, and of course Michael did that one as well. And I mean, we're fans of so many bands that he worked with, and He's kind of our idol. So when when after we did our Baby City Mask, we were trying to still find our sound, and we were like, "What are we gonna do now? We need to write, you know, some of our songs because on Mask, a lot of the songs were written by uh, Dave Bates, who's the guitar player, and Robin McCauley, who was in Dave's band previously. And when I uh, joined the band. We basically took the old songs that they've had and we, you know, we made them and I sang over it, but it wasn't like, it was our sound, it was our music, so In a Dream was actually the first song that Dave and I wrote together and it kind of set the way for all the other songs and we felt like we finally found what we wanted to sound like and we knew that we had to get somebody great to work with us, you know, to mix the song so we could compete with all the big bands out there. So we were sitting one day and we we're like, well, who can we possibly get? And we're like, well, we don't know if Michael was going to answer or not, but why not just send him an email? Can't hurt. And he actually got back and he, you know, he liked our music and we, you know, he mixed in a dream and we knew that he was the perfect guy to basically work with us in our music and he was a huge part of what we sound like. So. He just worked out, and we're extremely lucky that we got him. So, yeah, that's great. Just real simple like that, right? Just send an email, and the worst that, that he could say is no or not even respond back. So that's that's great. That's a, that's a that's a little lesson for bands. Hey, you want to try to work with a big producer? Hey, just send him an email, right, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I mean, I, I actually don't know why he responded. I mean, on the first song, we had Greg Bissman, we had Tony Franklin, those are some big names in the music world, and they're great musicians, so maybe it had something to do with it because Michael worked with them in the past and was curious, or he liked the songs, or <laughs> I don't know why. But now Michael is like, you know, he's part of the family, he's part of our team, so... I don't know what it was that made him get back to us, but whatever it was, <laughs> I'm very, very happy. He did. Yeah, it worked out. It worked out for the better. And I'm going to say that he liked the songs more than the fact that Robin McCauley was part of it. Obviously, Robin McCauley used to sing with uh, Michael Shankner group. Yeah. And yeah. Grand Prix. So, Grand Prix, obviously, yeah. Yeah, that, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you because... The, the first album, Mask, back in 2011, kind of came together relatively quickly. I mean, you joined the band, and within months, the uh, the new album was being released. So what was that experience like for you to sit there? I know a lot of that material was already pre-written and for Robert McCauley, and, and to step in there and sing those songs. I mean, what was that experience like for you? Uh, I think it was uh, good for us to do it that way because... I never, I never sang in a metal band or a hard rock band. <laughs> I was a classical pianist, and uh, I mean, I sang with, you know, I sang before, but not like fronting a band. So uh, the reason we put it out so fast is we wanted to have a foundation for the band to start building on, and it would also kind of give me a chance to figure out what I can do with my voice, what I wanted to do with my voice, to kind of find my style. And of course, it's like never-ending <laughs> evolution. But um, I really, I'm really glad that I got a chance to do that before, you know, I started writing my own songs and kind of putting my own style on the band. So songs were, you know, the instrumentation was done, and Robin had his vocals done as well. So I just kind of remade it so it suited my voice better, but. The songs, um, that's why I like, don't really like doing those songs live anymore because, it, you know, it was singing somebody else's music. And for me, like, especially performing live, you know, I put my heart and soul into it, so it's hard to do it with songs that, you know, I had nothing kind of to do with and I have no idea what they're about or what they kind of came from. So uh, I'm really glad I got the opportunity to do that. But, you know, the new songs are the ones that I feel like will define the band. Now, being that you came in there, and like you just said, you weren't necessarily comfortable singing somebody else's lyrics. And you know what? You're right. You can't have that emotional attachment to a song if you didn't write it or you weren't there during the process. So that being said, what was one of the first songs that you actually sat down and had a chance to write? Uh, In a Dream was that first song. And uh, I remember we were trying, to, we worked on a few songs before, and we were working with, you know, a few other writers, but um, it's like, you know, it, it should, doesn't feel right, it just doesn't feel right. And we were kind of stressed out at that point, because we didn't really know what direction we wanted to take our sound to. And I remember Dave had, like, that first riff, or, the, you know, the first intro that you hear in, in the gym and a few chords. And I had it on my laptop, and I was just sitting in Starbucks. I always tell the story because it's funny. Um, you know, in Starbucks, I was just listening to it, and I was really stressed out. I'm like, what are we going to do now? And all of a sudden, I don't know, the song just kind of happened. <laughs> and, like, cause the whole thing was written in, like, 10 minutes, I think. And so we had, you know, the whole structure and you know, all the lyrics. And then I, you know, went to our home studio, and I did all the melodies. And we had, you know, the song structured within a day, and uh, it was it just felt right, you know, just to get that feeling <laughs> uh, that, you know, that's the right direction. And we just started evolving the song, and uh, once it was ready to be recorded, we went into the studio with Bob Kulik, and we recorded that song, and then we, you know, got in touch with Michael, <laughs> and the song got made by Michael, and it just, you know, came together. So that was really cool. So, Margarita, who were some of your influences uh, growing up as a, as a singer? Well, I always loved Queen, Led Zeppelin, um, Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath. 
So yeah, those are the bands that really I think influenced me. And of course, Ronnie James Dio is one of my biggest influences. Yeah, speaking of Ronnie James Dio, I, I mean, you have like a, a song off the new album, Children of the Sea, on there. You did a great cover of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's one of my favorites. I mean, you mentioned some great bands that are Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, Metallica, and I will say this, you channeled... I forgot Queen. And Queen, but I'm going to go more to the Black Sabbath side. On that first album, Mask, coming in there, having to sing those lyrics, you really channeled a lot of those bands into that album and had a really, really good sound. But with, with the, the two new releases, your, your sound's kind of evolved a little bit. Now, is there a direction that you see the band going in, or is there a direction that both you and Dave want to see the band going in because there's a lot more theatrics now involved with the show and just the overall look of the band as well. Well, it's very hard to predict what they're going to sound like. And I don't think we had an idea. We weren't like, oh, let's make it sound like this. We just kind of wrote the music. And um, I think, you know, because I've played p piano my whole life, a lot of that kind of um, comes through because, you know, a lot of those melodies, I think, is just like I've heard them my whole life, so of course they're going to come through one way or another, and I was, al I was always into, like, theater and kind of, like, bigger-than-life shows, so, um, and I think it's really fun to do it, and especially live. It just kind of brings the show up, uh, to a whole other level, and I think it's I don't know, it's just fun to do that with the music. And Immortal Waltz, it just kind of happened, you know? And then when we went to Michael's, he had that organ sound in here. And we didn't intend for the sound to be like that, but it just happened. And then with our, you know, bass player and drummer, Nick Erickson and John Kaminsky, when we take the songs to them and then we play them live and try to evolve them, they also have a huge part and what it's going to sound like at the end. So, I don't know. I think it's just our dynamic as a band. It just makes the song come out the way they do. Well, so, you, yeah. you just you just mentioned Nick Erickson on bass and John Kraminski on drums. Now, how did, how did those two guys join the band? Because those, those two members weren't original members of the band. So, how did they come into the fold? When we started the band, we went through a few lineup changes just because you know, being in a band is just a huge commitment and you really have to have the right dynamic and everybody needs to get along. And I mean, it's like uh, winning a lottery, finding the right numbers. So we we're very lucky to find those two. And uh, when we were, Nick was actually interning at Bob Tulek's studio and when we were recording Breakaway, that was the song that I think, yeah, that, that was the song we were going on tour and I don't know, our bass player before just didn't work out because um, you really need, I mean, the bass is pretty prominent in the song so you need to be able to hold down uh, your part so, uh, you know, we were just in the studio and we're like, wow, we need a bass player, we're going to Oregon in like two weeks and he just kind of were like, you're a bass player, you know, we taught him the songs and he worked really hard and he seemed like he wanted to be in the band, so that's how he got in the band. And then he knew John, and he needed a drummer, and then he was like, I know John, and we brought John in, and then it just kind of felt right, and we were together ever since. Now your vocals so, are very your vocals yeah. are very your vocals are very emotional. You can hear it on the, on the song we're going to play in just a little bit. But also your stage presence, I can go by on a couple of videos I've seen. How important is that too? Not just singing the songs, but obviously what you do as you perform live. So we do put a lot of emphasis on that, and we're still kind of developing the live show, and we're still a new band, and we kind of do one step at a time, you know. But now we started to. Uh, really develop the live show and you know get uh, cool stage props and lights and uh, all kinds of stuff because I'm, the music is theatrical and definitely very emotional and dynamic so I think it's super super important that it comes through in the live show as well and you know every time we're on stage we put a <laughs> hundred percent into performing them but having those visual on stage I think really helps to 
kind of create the world that we're trying to understand. And, you know, when we uh, have people come to our shows, we really want them to just be immersed in our world <laughs> and just kind of experience it, not just musically, but also visually. Margarita, we were talking... <laughs> Talking about your uh, performance live, I always wanted to know what it was like the first time you got on stage and performed live. I mean, what, do you remember that experience? Yes, I do. It was pretty terrifying. <laughs> it was at the Roxy um, in Hollywood, and uh, it was very, very, like, first stages of the band. We only did, like, one song from Mask, and all the other ones were cover songs. And Dave is the only person that was in the band that's still in the band. We had Mike Bear and Dave and um, Sergio, I believe, and John. Um, and I vaguely remember that show, but um, it was very scary because I never fronted the band before. And having people like right in front of you, you know, staring at you and expecting to be entertained, you have a lot of responsibility. And, uh, you know, I was still kind of trying to find myself. Um, you know, find how to really work the crowd and uh, how to kind of convey those emotions in the songs. But, um, you know, it went great and it was just really fun and I loved doing that. So that's, I felt like I really found what I wanted to do and that's why we continued the band and we said, you know, decided to just take it to the top and, you know, as far as we could. So yeah, it was a really cool experience. Lot, lot, lots of pressure on the lead singer, and, and now it's just second nature to you because, like you said, you're kind of developing the stage performance now, and and the music can only go so far. But when you go see the see a band live, it's like you said, you got to entertain and perform, and it looks like you guys are doing that from the videos that we've seen so far. So, people, if you haven't seen the band or you want to know about the band. Um, you guys are going to be hitting the road this year too, right? 2015? Yes. Yes, we are. Um, we already put, <laughs> we travel like about 15 states already. So that's like our favorite thing to do, you know, tour and play shows, share the music with people. So yeah, that's going to be our main priority in the next 12 months. We're just going to be touring and uh, supporting the CD. And um, we're also looking to um, go to Europe maybe by the end of this year or beginning of next year. So hopefully we'll see what happens. We're working on putting together uh, tours right now. So we'll be announcing them later in the summer. Okay, people, keep an eye out for The Edge of Paradise. Our new album is out now, Immortal Waltz. Matt, you have anything else you want to add? I just got one question. This is a question we ask all of our guests. Oh, here's the big question, Margarita. On hard rockology. <laughs> have you had or what has been your spinal tap oh, moment? Oh, definitely. She's had to have a spinal tap moment. Oh, no, I have so many. <laughs> I guess going to band numbers <laughs> left and right. Um, we were recording a song, uh, Breakaway, and we... Uh, our bass player was supposed to show up. It was before Nick, and we were at Bob's studio, and our bass player showed up like three hours later with an iPad. <laughs> Couldn't even tune his bass, so that was really embarrassing. Uh, and also, we had a show in Hawaii, and the night before, there was a tsunami warning, so we had to wait on a mountain for like all night, and the festival was canceled. So we went to, from one club to another and just played a bunch of shows in one night. <laughs> we played three shows in one night. So it turned out to be okay, but it was definitely one of those moments. I bet you that would never happen again, right, in Matt Hawaii Tsunami Watch? No, it'll never happen. No, it's like once in a lifetime, you know, but hey, it makes for a great Spinal Tap <laughs> moment story. Yeah, pretty scary. <laughs> I didn't think going off everywhere. It's fun, though. All right, that was like the first time ever that's ever happened before, Matt. Yeah, well. <laughs> but anyway, Margarita, like I was saying, uh, we want to thank you for coming on the Hard Rockology Show. So where can people find out about the band? you got a website, Facebook, on Twitter. Our website is edgeofparadiseband.com. Our Facebook page is facebook.com slash edgeofparadiseband. 
Twitter is I just Paradise One, and we also have an Instagram, which is just I just Paradise. So yes, please get in touch with us. We're very social, and we love hearing from you, and we're just excited to be spreading our music. And thank you for having me at the show. It's awesome. All right, Marguerite, I want to thank you for joining us here on the Hard Rockology Show. And as always, we always like to have our guest introduce the next track. So why don't you go ahead and introduce uh, another track off of Immortal Waltz. Thank you so much for having me. And the next track is going to be In a Dream. And this was the first song that Dave and I wrote together. And this kind of set the way for the uh, sound of our band, for the, the whole city. Mm-hmm. 